What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is day six of the eight day recap of the Netflix series, The Madness. And the last thing we seen was our boy Muncie. He jumped off into the water like a last action superhero after fighting off Don and getting shot at. Now, unfortunately, Stu didn't make it. And it turns out that Stu actually wasn't a bad guy. He was getting played just like everyone else was and getting set up in this deadly game. But before we jump into this and break down episode six, if you like murder mysteries, if you like being on the investigative side and trying to figure out how to get yourself out of trouble, then the madness might be a series for you on Netflix. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, turn on that notification bell, make sure you hit that subscribe button and help a brother out. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers, but let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode six, the madness. Starting the episode off, we see Muncie laying on the beach. Now I'm assuming that he jumped off of that cliff that we see off in the distance, which is a very, very high cliff. But when you're getting shot at, anything goes. Now he got washed up on shore and we do see somebody come over and they notice him and they actually pick him up and they drag him back to safety. Now, when you've been out in that water all night, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm not that good of a swimmer, but I can only imagine that it's rough out there. When it comes to Agent Franco, Remember, he was supposed to have the wire on Muncie to figure out what Stu was talking about. Well, that didn't happen, and they lost where Stu was at. So he's at home doing his own research, and he's looking at Revitalize website. Now, remember, this is the same place that was on the hard drive that Mark had when his wife Lucy was looking through it. He's also looking at these different plans for geological digging within uh, the new lithium areas out in Minnesota. So he's piecing together what Revitalize is actually doing and why Stu was so heavily involved and wanted the influence from Mark. A man by the name of Rome is the one that actually picked Muncie up on the beach. Now he thought it was a woman, but he was hallucinating. Now Rome, he's treating his injuries. He even gave him a Percocet to ease the pain. Now he's talking about, I know who you are and I've seen you on TV. You're a revolutionary. You're just like your father. You took out that Caucasian man, you chopped him up. You did the right thing. But Muncie didn't do any of this. And the guy is saying, you can't use my phone. I don't want the feds over here. And if this lady, Julia, that you says is so bad shooting at you, if she comes over here, then I want her. So Muncie, he's not involved in any of this. He really wants to get out of here. So when Rome goes to the bathroom, he gives the dog his, <laughs> he gives the dog his cereal and then he runs out the front door. All of the dots are beginning to get connected. Agent Franco shows up to Stu's estate. Now we know that Stu is unalive and Don is unalive. These are two people that Muncie has mentioned. We know that Julia, she was on Mark's hard drive. We know that she's on the other side. So she's acting like she's security, which technically isn't wrong, but she's saying that maybe Daniels, Muncie was the one that did it. But Agent Franco, they know he wouldn't do anything like this because everything he's saying has became true. So they're kind of iffy on her, but they want the security footage of what happened to see if Muncie actually was here or did any of this unaliving to Mark or to Don or to this random security guard. Now remember Lori, she went to Stu and Stu gave her $5,000 and was gonna help her out moving along. Well, she looks on the news and she sees that, well, Stu is no longer here. So she's like, oh my goodness. If they can take out a billionaire, there's no telling what they're gonna continue to do with us. Now the kids are over here arguing and you know how it is as a parent, you hear all that noise, she tuned it all out. She didn't tell them to be quiet, nothing. She just knows that Stu is gone, that money is gone, and she could be next. While they're waiting on Julia to present to them the security footage, she's stalling. Now she says she's gonna go get it. Now Franco and his partner, they're just talking and they're wondering, okay, what could have went wrong in here? Stu is on the live. Okay, he's connected to Mark. Okay, the guy Don, he's here, he's on the live. Maybe Julia has something to do with this. Maybe they just want us to close this case so we don't dig any deeper. But they look for Julia and she's gone. They didn't get any of the footage. And then they get a call that Muncie has actually turned himself in to a hospital. We gotta get over there and get to question him because he was supposed to be under FBI supervision. Muncie's in the hospital and his daughter Callie has showed up. This is the only person on his side. And remember, no one knows about her because he isn't on the birth certificate. Well, he's in severe danger because Julia's looking for him and she knows that he turned up in this hospital. 
but the security that they had out front, the police officer handcuffed him to the bed. Then we hear the fire alarm go off. And of course, Muncie knows Julia is here. She's trying to take me out. So he's telling Callie to take the fire extinguisher and bust the handcuffs because he needs to get out of here. With everyone evacuating from the hospital, Muncie and Callie, they run down to the end of the hallway. And where they go? Into one of the storage closets. Now they got this fire extinguisher still just in case. And Julia, if you look at her face right now on the screen, you can tell she's not playing around. We already seen what she did to Stu and to the security guard. Hell, she even took out Don to try to get at Muncie. Now you hear security talking about, hey, we're looking for Muncie Daniels. But hell, he didn't got up and he's out of here. Life is very valuable and every moment counts right now. Agent Franco comes and he clears out after looking for Julia. He doesn't see her. Now they come up here and they talk to Muncie and they're saying, listen, Muncie, we got some names. We need to get together and make this happen. Now Muncie is saying, look, after everything that's transpired, I need protection for my wife. I know she's not my wife currently, but my ex-wife, my son, and my daughter, if we're gonna actually make this work and go follow through. Now, Callie is saying, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want the feds sitting outside of my house, let alone, no one even knows about me. No one even seen me. So Muncie, he realizes that his daughter, she's really making moves within the community. And of course, you don't want the feds snooping around whatever they got in Philly. Because remember, <laughs> the neighbors said, we all got warrants up here. So at least we got the investigation team back together. Franco and Muncie go up to Delaware. Now they're staying low key at this point. And we see Muncie, he gets on the phone with Elena and he's telling her maybe Lori contacted Stu and they do have the hard drive. So they're going through it to see if anything clears them, but they aren't for sure. And we hear him tell his ex-wife he misses her. Now, when he goes in the lift room, DeFranco, Detective DeFranco, he's looking at some different things that were on the hard drive, but he finds a guy by the name of Park who did YouTube. Now he ended up being unalived a couple of months ago after he stopped messing with Revitalize. Now Revitalize is the company that Stu was trying to get the influence from. So they're trying to see if these people are connected with anything. Now this is good information for Muncie. Now what we see from Julia, she pulls up in a BMW i8, clean. She pulls up next to this Toyota Corolla and she hops out and she puts something in the wheel well, but she's switching cars. Now, right now, it doesn't make any sense, but maybe later on, we'll start to see why she did it. One thing is the BMW is too flashy. This here looks like a regular woman just riding around, works a nine to five. So she switches vehicles and you know, Julia, she's low key, but she's also out there in front of everybody. So it's really right up under our noses. We get a backstory on Franco and how he ended up joining the FBI. Now he was NYPD, but after 9-11, three months later, he switched over. Now him and his brother, they kind of stopped talking to each other because his brother, he cut everyone off and started hanging out with like Antifa and hanging around some dumb people. And ultimately they got into it with a certain group of individuals and he ended up getting shot several times. So for him, this is very, very serious. And that's why he's actually so passionate about solving these crimes. And he also has 40 convictions up under his belt while being the FBI agent. Lori and Muncie, they have an on and off relationship. Initially, she didn't trust them, but now she wants information. But now that Stu is unalive, Muncie asked her, I thought you didn't know Stu. I thought you never met him. She said, well, I didn't know if you should know if I did or not. Basically, I didn't trust you at that point. But she's asking, is Stu really unalive? And who did it? And Muncie, he uses that same thing against her. I don't know if you should know that information. But what they're waiting on right now is Franco to go in there and explain everything to try to free up Muncie's name so he can go ahead and walk free from this case and they go after who really committed these crimes. While Franco's in here pleading this case saying, listen, we got Muncie, we know who's out here doing certain things. The higher ups in the FBI are saying, well, you haven't gave us any specific names or any details. You gave us a company name, Revitalize, but if we go after them, they'll just collapse this and create a new one. Now his partner isn't saying anything. He's really leaving Franco out there to dry. Basically talking about, let's go to the next line. And Franco's saying, no, we didn't piece all of this together. Let's continue to do it. But the higher ups, his supervisors, they're saying, nah, we're not gonna pursue this because this isn't enough and it's leading us nowhere. So what you're gonna have to do is give Franco back over to the PD and you're done. This case is over with as far as the feds go. Once they all get outside, we seen Franco snatch up his partner 
doing exactly what I said, leaving them to dry. And when he gets in the parking garage, he tells him straight up, Muncie and Lori, there's nothing I can do for you guys anymore. They took me off of this. It's over with. You're you're gone. Well, you got 24 hours before they realize that I cut you loose to go turn yourself back into the Philly PD. Do whatever you want. He speeds off. Now, Lori, she's still in it. And she gives Muncie her car and says, be careful, the brakes aren't good. But this is allowing him to at least try to figure out how he can clear his name or find out where Julia is. Muncie went and talked to Lori Jennings, RIP to her, to her widow. And her widow was saying that she doesn't have the laptop because Muncie's looking for any information or notes. She told the police that she had her laptop with her at all times. But she also said that Laura was talking to someone before she was on the live with that heart attack allegedly. So he goes and meets up with this gentleman and this gentleman is providing the information that he definitely needs. Now, he also has a story. Remember, there was a guy that was unalived earlier that we seen that Franco was looking up. It turns out it's his brother. Now he's saying they're coming after me just like they're coming after you. I don't want anything to do with this. You leave me out of it, but here's the information that I have. And these are the companies and people you need to look into. So a lot of people are affected by this, and this is realistic. Those billion dollar companies, they have access and reach to more things than you can even imagine. Now everything goes from being sad and we see Franco, he's out celebrating. The case is over with, he can untie his tie. He's out here bowling, a strike, he's going for that 300 perfect game. They playing pool, salsa dancing. This is the life right here. This is how you're supposed to enjoy your day off. Once you get off of work, you just want to unwind and relax. Jokes, drinks, everything is flying. And the last thing we see is him walk to his car, getting ready to head home, but we hear a glove department open up. Then you hear <coughs> pow. Franco shoots himself in the head. I don't know what that's all about. All right, let me know what you think about Franco. Was it just too much? Was he tired? Was he done putting up with this? And is Muncie one step closer to actually figuring this out and clearing his name? Or it looks like trouble is just out on the horizon waiting on him. We got two more episodes. Let me know what you think. Two more eight-day recaps of The Madness on Netflix. So far, I'm giving this series a, a seven, a six and a half, a seven. It's good. I like the storyline, but we need a little more action in my opinion. But we got two episodes left. Tune in tomorrow. I'm Mod IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Definitely hit that subscribe button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.